So we're going to be introducing uh, Mint, which is the Android Malware Investigation Toolkit that was developed at the University of New Haven Cyber Forensics Research and Education Group. The major, uh, the main developer on this has been Mike Yang and uh, supervised by uh, Ibrahim Bagili, who is the director of the group. So we're just going to very quickly talk about what Mint is, some pre-development things we had to do, uh, the development technologies that were used, and um, high-level features of the tool, as well as a very quick demo of the tool. So Mint is an application that's been developed for digital forensic investigators to reverse engineer Android malware and to be able to identify benign as well as malicious applications. The APK files on Androids are decompiled using the source uh, from APK tool to Smalley files. And then our tool is capable of calculating two types of danger scores and uses really the, the crux of the whole thing is being able to use the permissions of applications to be able to detect um, whether the application is benign or malicious. So before we went into the development, we had to do a couple of things. We had to gather some APK samples that are bad uh, in terms of being able to have some malware. We needed some benign applications, and we also needed to do some machine learning in order to be able to learn uh, which applications are good and which applications are bad. So we received access to the Android Malware Genome Project from North Carolina State University and other malware APK samples. Approximately we used 1,260 samples and we downloaded approximately 1,100 benign APK samples as well. So to, once we were able to do that, we developed a program that's capable of extracting the permissions from these applications and then we fed them into Weka. From Weka, we were then able to create uh, machine learning rules that are capable of telling us to, um, with, a, with a certain level of confidence, if the application is benign or if the application is, per, is, uh, is malicious. So the couple of technologies that we used um, in order to develop this, we used Qt 4.8 for the GUI interface, C++. We used the APK tool for decompiling the APK files. And in order to speed up the processing in terms of our database storage, we ended up using a SQLite database backend to store hash values and names of known malicious APK files, the association rules, the permission protection level for each Android permission, uh, which we used to calculate the danger scores, and a table outlining each permission and its related system call. Now, this was important. Um, this was an important part um, that we had to do in order to be able to map each permission to the system call in, in the actual code. Some of the features that our application is capable of, uh, uh, some of the features in our application is that it's quite easy to use. Um, it decompiles APK files, it allows you to view code, it allows you to search the source code, display each APK profile, compare APK files, it allows you to generate call graphs for each APK file, identify known malicious APK files, uh, calculate two types of APK danger scores, add new known malicious APK files to the hash data set, and identify applications with known benign and malicious association rules. Now let's dive in very quickly into the actual application. So this is what the main interface looks like. Over here you have the decompiled APK files that are currently uh, in the system. You can actually delete uh, any of them you want by clicking on one of them and then going to file and then delete. You can delete the actual file or you can simply just delete it from the interface. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and delete one of them to show you what it's like. Uh, let's go ahead and add a new file. Now, when adding a file, there's a couple of things that happens. Uh, a, the decompiling happens, and then all the rule matching and everything like that happens in the background. So, for example, let's choose a benign application here. And if we click Open, you can see that it's being added. And down here, you can see that it's being processed. So, um, 
once it's processed, if there's no association rule found, you can see under the DFA score it says not applicable. And the DFP score is really a score that's calculated from the permissions themselves. So we look at every kind of permission um, that is being accessed through the application. And then we are able to calculate a score that way. Let's take a, let's take a quick look at, uh, for example, one, some of these applications. So this is a benign application. It's been, uh, or this is a malicious application right here. Um, it has a high DFA score and a high DFP score. We can go to the extracted permissions and then you could see the protection level for each of the permissions there. If one of them has more than one, you can uh, look at it as well. You can search through the permissions. Um, you can have a look at the association rules that were found. And these are the rules that were generated from our machine learning step that were integrated into the software tool. Um, you can see the application information uh, here. Um, and you could do that for any of the applications, of course. So the other thing you can do is you can click down here and then um, you can start looking at the code and the, the, the decompiled code. Or if there's any JPEG files, for instance, you can start looking at the JPEG files. Um, and that's quite uh, important whenever you're taking a look at, um, at an application to figure out exactly what's going on with it. The other thing one can do with, with, uh, with our application is that you can go to the call graph, and this takes some time because it has to actually parse out all the files uh, in order to generate a call graph. And if you click on generate call graph, then you can see it processing down here again. And then what that does which you'll see once uh, once this is done, is that it'll show you all the calls that we were able to locate in uh, the Smalley files. And that's uh, that might be quite important to hone in on any uh, calls that, for example, investigators looking at fairly quickly. The next thing I'm going to show you once this is done is how to compare uh, APK files So like I said, this is a time-consuming process. This is why we only allow an investigator to do it if, they, if it's quite an important task. So as you can see here, these are the orphan functions, and here are the function trees as well, if need be. So let's go ahead and jump into the comparing. So let's select, for example, a couple of these um, APK files, and let's click on Compare Selected APKs. What you'll see here is basically all the APK files that were selected. If I click on this APK file, it will automatically compare it to the one ahead of it. So in this scenario, we have an APK file, which is this one here, and the APK file on its right is this one. And then what we have here is the percentage difference. We applied a percentage difference calculation to be able to see, okay, what, you know, what sort of differences can we detect between the applications? Another thing you can do is that you can switch. So for example, if I click on this one and then I, I click on the keyboard, uh, you know, the left hand or, or the left arrow key, it will move it. And what this will do is that will allow us, for example, to compare this application with the next one right now. Or if I click on this one, it will compare this application to this one. So that's the comparison functionality that's built into our APK tool. Um, you can do your searches uh, as well. And what else? Uh, it, will, it will automatically identify if there's any ma ma malicious rules that are found. And all of this information, all the important information that you might need access to is available here in the profile. So the other thing is that this is the hash, uh, the hash table database. And these are basically known malicious applications. And what we did was uh, we hashed all of the, um, all of the, uh, malicious APK files that we had, and we allow then the user to add new known malware samples in order for them to be able to use them down the road um, uh, if, if need be. So this was a very quick tutorial of, of Mint. Um, we hope that uh, this is something that's going to be useful to the community, and uh, we're fairly excited about um, 
about releasing this and making it uh, available for public use. This is our contact information. Um, thank you very much.